This next story kind of concerns a $50,000 racehorse. Any of y'all ever seen a $50,000 racehorse or what it was? You know I was raised not too, not too far out of Rockingham, you can go down 74 West. And you know I was raised there when I was last. We didn't live too far from the PD River. And you know the closest to the river you got the more curves, you got the more hills and everything. You all a good day, man. And uh, when you get to Petey River, there was two stores, old stores, one on each side of the River Bridge. And both of them sold old river fish, like shad, catfish, and bullet, and just about anything else you might want. Well, on the evening on Saturdays, my daddy get off, we'd go over there in stores, especially one across the river, it was on Mr. Charlie Perkins. We'd go over there and we'd just win RC coals, one of them big old moon pies or a pack of square nap, and we'd sit around and just talk. And I tell you, I reckon that's where I learned how to tell stories. The old characters, they could tell you some more tall tales. And it got so they didn't buy me a, 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 a bar of candy and a picture to tell them a story. But one other reason I like to go to Mr. Charlie, Mr. Charlie kept a big old black bear back behind the building. Y'all remember that black bear? Any of y'all remember that black bear? He kept it behind his store. Sure enough, he did. Charlie used that bear to bring his business. Hey, there you go. He used that bear to bring his business. Well, one day, they were these two guys who come from the mountains. And they said, Charlie said, uh, we want to buy your bear. So I said, well, what do you want to do with my bear? Oh, we want to train our dog with it, he said. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't be interested in selling that bear that you train your dog with. But then, they started laying down hundreds and hundreds. Charlie's eyes got right big, you know. Any, any sense of body comes in. Y'all get on down the road. Get on the road. I ain't even gonna sell my bar. Get on down the road. Well, I reckon he made these fellows a little mad. Called a quarter to Charlie. Them fellows come back about two weeks, two weeks later and poisoned his bear. Sure enough. I don't know what's what happened, but the bear died. And oh, Charlie Perkins had got his hand on them two fellows. Ain't no telling what he'd have done with them. But you know, he was about the meanest man in Epson County back then. Why? He cheats you on a business deal, anything else. You know, if he'd go to church, you'd go to buy fish or something from him. He'd look you right straight in the eye and put his finger, a thumb on him, scale and run a pound and you'd up there. He don't tell how much money that thumb made that old man. Well, you know, Charlie was getting a little old. And the people of the community started worried about Charlie and where his soul would go in the year after. They started praying for Charlie. Charlie, you need to go to church. Oh, uh, I haven't got time to set stuff like that. No, i got to run a business. Well, you know the good Lord sent a Baptist revival over in Anson County. And they said, we're going to try to get Charlie to go. The women started asking him to go. I haven't got time, he said. Even the men started asking him to go. Charlie, you need to go to that revival. Well, finally, I don't know what he thought was good for business or what. But he said, well, I'll be there one night. Four nights they had the revival. No Charlie. But the very fifth night, sure enough, Charlie was as good as his word. He was there. And you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Charlie got religion. Charlie got saved. Charlie said, I'll turn over a new leaf. I'm living at the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. Well, you know, when we get saved, people should see a change in our lives too. Amen. Well, one of the things Charlie did, he read his Bible, started reading his Bible. And another thing he did, at his store when he'd go bring up a cell, he'd look up toward heaven and he'd repeat a verse of scripture. But one fall day, we was all sitting up there in the old pot that it's still a little cool that day, we sitting there. These two little girls walked in the door there. Charlie said, little girl, can I help you? Yes, sir, Mr. Charlie said, we want some of that hard candy you got there in that big old glass jar. Y'all make them big old glass jar of candy? Yeah. He reached up there, he pulled a big old top pop up, handed it down there. Y'all get your hand full. They reached in there and I bet them little hands got three dollars of candy. I ain't never seen such a handful of candy in my life. And back then three dollars would feed several families of candy. They stuck in their pocket and they reached in there, one of them had reached in pocket, come out with a dime and give it to Charlie. Charlie didn't say nothing. The little girl walked on out the door. Charlie went behind the cash register, rung up the cell, put the dime in it, looked up towards the tower and said, Suffer the little children to come into the <laughs> We were proud of 
Charlie. Charlie had done good. About five minutes later, though, he comes snag Griffin's mom in there. She was looking for a birthday present for her dad. Well, Charlie showed her behind the counter, showed her all the, you know, cigar boxes. Go ahead, sir. Paper chips, barlow knives, and whatever. I think she might have got a ball of Aqua Bell or Shaker or something like that. He gift wrapped it for her, everything. She paid it. Walked on out the door. Charlie went there to the cash register, but gee, run out the cell. Looked up to the hotel and said, Honor, thou father, and I'm father. Man, Charlie had been reading his Bible straight up down, wasn't it? About 10 minutes later, though, you never heard all the commotion in your life in front of that store. When that boy runs to the window, I said, I said, what is it? He says, it's a brand new truck pulling a brand new horse club. This fellow must be my state, but I don't know him. He went back and sat down. All of a sudden, that front door blowed right up. He come to the floor with his 10-gallon hat, a little short, bow-legged fellow. And he had a coat on enough rhinestone he could choke a horse. He asked but he was dressed in a tea, buddy. Had them little pointed toe boots, you know, with the little spurs on the back. He strutted up right that counter, ka ka jink, ka jink, ka jink. <laughs> Charlie said, Sir, can I help you? Yeah, I've been grubbing. I'm looking for a horse blanket. Said, You got air? Sure enough, Charlie had been to Payton, South Carolina, several weeks before and bought him three horse blankets. All just alike, but a different color. He said, I'll go get you one. He goes to the back, he gets the top one off the shelf, brings it up there, puts it down on the counter, says, what do you think about this one, sir? The man looked at it and said, how much? Charlie says, sir, that there will be $9.95. $9.95? dollars he said. You don't realize what I got on that horse trailer. Right Charlie said, no, but I've never seen you before. I don't know what you got on the horse trailer. He said, I got a $50,000 race horse, and I ain't about to put no cheap blanket on it. Charlie said, well, I got a dog back there. You think he'd be interested? Go get it. You better hurry up. <laughs> Charlie goes back and gets the second blanket. Same blanket, different color. He kind of lays it down the counter. He said, what do you think about this one, sir? That's a little better. I said, how much for that one? Charlie says, sir, that would be 1995. I done told you, man. I ain't put no cheap blanket on that horse. Now, if you can't got nothing else, I'm going to go to Monroe, I'm going to go to Charlotte, I'm going to get you some. Charlie said, sir, sir, just, just, just calm down, calm down. I said, I believe I've got something in the back that'll suit you to a T. He goes to the back, get that last horse blanket. Same blanket, different coat. But this time he comes to bring it like he's carrying a crown. He just so gentle with that blanket, so gentle. He shot spread it out of that cavern, kind of blew his back like that. He said, I wonder what you think about this one, sir. This one's the finest in the house. The man said, what you want for this one? Charlie said, sir, that'll be 99 95 That fellow reached in his billfold. He had the biggest billfold. I guess I'm like a minute to it. And he had shoveled through that thing. I ain't no telling how many want much money in there. But he finally shoveled through there and he come up with a $100 bill. He looked at that $100 bill, he laid that back down the counter, picked up that horse blanket, put it up in arm, told Charlie, he said, keep the change. <laughs> Got on up and strutted on out the door the other day. Walked on out, slammed the door. Folks, you could have heard a pin drop in that story. Now, we didn't know what Charlie don't say to this one. Charlie looked at that $100 bill, kind of looked back at us. Then he kind of looked up towards heaven. And I don't know what kind of conversation him and the Lord had, but I think the devil might have given him this conversation. <laughs> Charlie went there behind the counter, put the money in there, said, Gene! Looked up towards heaven and said, Lord, he was a stranger, and I took him in. <laughs>